What is the best way to animate in Scratch? There are countless methods of animating on Scratch, but they can be reduced down to three main types. Sequencing, block-based, and element animation. And in today's video, we'll be looking at which is the most efficient and easiest method to use in your projects. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And let's get on with the video. So the most popular way to animate in Scratch is through a sequence of costumes. It's the most intuitive way, like the first one you would think of. You can look at almost any animation in the Explore tab, like this one I picked, and you can find the creator who uses this exact method. Now, I don't actually have any projects that use sequencing because I'm not an animator, sadly. So yeah, I chose this project. And it's by Orlando Animates, as you can see, and I found it on the trending page. You can see that if I go through the costumes, every single costume is used in the animation to make him say, Today, Today I'm going to try to grimace shake, shake or something. I, I forgot what it was. And you can see it took 22 costumes. And this is actually pretty easy to use. Can you see there's only a few objects and the mouth can just be copy pasted and changed. It's very intuitive and easy to understand, but it can take a long time to even make a short animation. Like this person only says a few words and it took 22 costumes. costumes. And that's just crazy. Now, there are quicker but more complex ways to animate than sequencing, such as block-based animation. One of the most efficient ways to animate. This method of movement uses primarily code to run, which means every movement is coded in manually. For example, let's take my project in Crediblocks V1 Area Math. I'm very proud of it. Let's look inside the costumes after I play around. As, as you can see, it's an Incrediblocks project like I've been experimenting with. Links in the description. And you can see that every single animation is made through the sequence. You can see the yellow glow is going through, and that makes the zombie's head go up and down, up and right. So I program in which costume to switch to, and on which stick. And I can also program which way the head should move. And this is one of the most efficient ways to animate, because it only uses two, two costumes. costumes. Which is actually crazy, compared to the Grimace Shake project using 22, 22 costumes to say only one sentence. So another project that uses block-based animation is my Flow But With Polos experiment, where I use letters to code each animation. It doesn't look very good at the moment. And there you go, that's it. I'm not sure if you could hear it, but pretty cool. So, which method is better? Block-based animation or sequencing? Well, both have their advantages and disadvantages. We can suit them to different types of animators, but there is a compromise between the two. Element animation. Element animation uses both code and costumes to give a smooth effect, which makes it one of the best ways to animate. I don't see many scratches use this, really. Let's take my project Memphis Clock, which is a very simple project that uses both instructing code, you can see, and costumes showing many frames to make it look professional. You can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the questionable 10, 11, and 12 that please don't ask me in the comments why I did that. I have no idea. So overall, none of these methods are the easiest. It simply depends on what you like to work with, code, custom blocks, the costume editor, and so on. You can try any of these methods and see which is the best for you. So that's really all for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys again in the next video.